Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN, and I'd like to welcome myself back to GGN. Um, not sure how long it'll last, but either way, I'm glad to be back. It's a beautiful day here in the Midwest. We got some nice uh, weather modification rain. Uh, they prayed for it, and, and the man, not God, made the rain, so thank man for it. And I think they may have actually added a little bit of spices to it uh, because I noticed somebody else had a really bad throat infection and now I have some kind of throat infection too. So right before the Olympics, so go guys, go team. I got lots of great articles I'm going to tie together in this news video today. So uh, let's just start it off. So this year, Turkey denies fighters shot down by Syria. The general staff of Turkey's armed forces on Friday backed down from its previous claim that its fighter jet was downed last month by Syrian forces. This is from July 13th. I just wanted to include it in there to give you some background. Uh, Syria crisis, three of Assad's top chiefs killed in rebel bomb uh, strike. That's right. So now they're going after his closest generals that aren't defecting. And uh, what do you have? as well. Just like in Iraq with Saddam Hussein, they killed what? His, not his uh, main son, but the, the second one. Same with Gaddafi. They didn't kill Saif, or whatever his name was. Uh, no, but they are trying to uh, try him by international criminal court, but they killed his other son along with his grandchildren. So now Assad, they're killing his brother-in-law, which led to his wife, um, Asma, I think her name is, to uh, supposedly, reportedly flee to Russia. But I'm not going to say that that's, that's confirmed. It could just be propaganda. But, uh, yeah, so, but they are killing his family, and they are uh, basically tightening the noose on Syria so they, maybe they can kick it this uh, show up for Iran before the Olympics. China, Russia, block Western-backed draft resolution against Syria. That's right. And this is up here, breaking news as well today, because this article is from the 19th. So it says, Syria's situation, Russia says it will veto proposal to extend UN-Syria uh, observer mission. Sorry about that. So China and Russia have vetoed a Western-backed draft resolution against the Syrian government requesting a new mandate for unarmed military observers in the Arab country. All right, so next up we have French journalists killed by Syrian opposition, says report. Uh, French journalist uh, Gilles, or Giles uh, Jacques Gier, who lost his life in the central Syria earlier this year, was killed by the Syrian opposition's moral fire report says the investigation was carried out by French intelligence and based on a ballistic study carried out in the area. According to my contact, it says here the mortar fire came from the Sunni rebel zone. So it's pretty sad because what it says, this is while Western reports have put it, the blame on Damascus saying that he was killed by a Syrian army shell. So they're not helping out. Why? Well, because one of their own journalists, American, was actually killed by the same rebel terrorists. Remember? Rebels killed Western journalists in Syria, not Assad army, army along with another French journalist. That's why the French were probably getting into this. They like, well, you know, what the hell is going on here? And um, they got to the bottom of it, and they figured out it was a rebel terrorist. So it says here, a medical source says armed groups killed two Western journalists in Syria, rejecting allegations that they died in government shelter. And uh, one of them was Marie Colvin. And if they weren't directly killed by the rebels, they were basically using them as, um, I don't know, like kind of like a shell game and putting them in a harm's way. Because uh, from reports, they basically fire off a few shots, blow up some stuff, and then you just go start running. Like in Libya, that's why they call them rats. And poor civilians and reporters trying to uh, cover this are basically caught in the crossfires. Gangs kill Syrian civilians to prove deterioration in security. Uh, and that's right, they do want deterioration in security ahead of uh, the 2014 elections in Syria. So Syria has announced that terrorist groups were behind the killing and wounding of tens of people in the village of uh, al Tremese in the east of the country. So eyewitnesses who appeared on Syrian TV said terrorists attacked, destroyed, and burned scores of houses in the city on the outskirts of the city of Hama on Thursday, killing dozens of civilians. Syrian opposition has an amazing CIA credential. Actually, it's a list of credentials. A Syrian National Council makes up this uh, individual, Mr. Kadmani, a member of the Executive Bureau and head of foreign affairs, the Syrian National Council, two-time Bilderberg meeting attendee, and Director of Governance and International Cooperation for the CIA Front Ford Foundation, followed by this Rodwin Zidwi. It says here he's ahead of a Washington think tank who also is pushing for uh, basically legislation or some kind of intervention in Syria. And some of his signatories involved a former CIA chief, uh, also with this Osama Manahad. 
and it goes on here and it says here the commentator on Al Jazeera and so yeah it's basically what the propaganda arm and then we have this Michael Wise so once one of the most widely quoted Western experts on Syria and he's a director of communications and PR at the neocon Henry Jackson Society. He says here that the society's international patrons include James X CIA boss Woosley, Michael Homeland Security Shirtoff, William Pinak Crystal, and it goes on and it says Joshua Bomb Iran Mura Chivik, and it says here Richard Prince of Darkness Pearl. It says here Tikkun Alam blog founder Richard Silverstein calls Friends of Syria Michael Wise, a pro-Israel neocon who authors blueprint for Western military intervention in Syria approved by Syrian expatriates. Or yeah. Then uh, next up, kind of the same thing, but also George Soros, U.S. backed Syrian opposition linked to Bilderberg, CFR, Goldman Sachs, and George Soros. Go in there and check that out. You can type in the headline. But Soros is uh, usually associated with color revolutions, such as the Arab Spring and that. It says NATO carrying out vast Syria disinformation, updates on Syria conflict. It says here, New York Times confirms in their article, Assad's troops force rebels to retreat in Damascus battle. Earlier press team reports that Syrian security forces have routed militants in Damascus and elsewhere, while other Western outlets are finally conceding that Syria's borders are being resecured after cross-border assaults by militants from NATO sanctuaries. I remember that article, too. Yeah, here it is right here. 20 hours ago, Syrian rebels control border crossings with Iraq and Turkey. And that, of course, leads to the what? Washington begins to plan for collapse of Syrian government. Yeah, and while I was away, I noticed that uh, one of the things that came up besides killing Assad's family members is what? Oh, the chemical weapons story, you know, WMDs. And that's going to justify what? U.S. Israeli NATO airstrikes. And now the U.N. is actually considering using U.N. charters or laws to start actually attacking and arming the uh, quote, peace, peacekeepers. Julian Assange and Wikilinks joined the NATO attack on Syria. So it says here, as the NATO alliance inch, inches closer to a military attack on Syria, a new front in the destabilization of Damascus government has been opened by the intelligence agencies of the Western powers. The vehicles chosen by the CIA and its allies for this new assault is once again the shadowy limited hangout operation calling itself Wikileaks. Yeah, and this makes sense. I like how they put this in parentheses. It says the WikiLeaks website, which is the U.S., uh, which the U.S. National Security Agency uh, could cripple within minutes if it so choose. In other words, they use this um, for disinformation and that. And this is talking about the emails of uh, the Syrian government. Oh yeah, that's right. Remember when uh, they came out? They were saying that. Um, Originally, when the story broke, that, oh, he has ties to the CIA. Ooh, you know, Assad's, uh, you know, he's not what you think. But I would imagine he was similar to Gaddafi, where, whereas they thought they were safe. They thought they were buddies with the British and stuff like that. You know, his wife was there. Uh, that's is where his wife was from. This was England, and that was taught there. And I believe Gaddafi's sons, at least one of them, uh, got a college degree in, in, like, Oxford or something like that. So... So it's a little bit of double speak and um, hypocrisy, I guess you can call it, and the, on, on the part of the West. So it's here, Mask of Zion, ceasing to learn is ceasing to live. So WikiLeaks is a Zionist poison. And I think we've heard this before, but U.S. Israel plotting to overthrow Assad, says report American defense officials are reportedly in talks with the Israeli counterparts plotting to overthrow the government of Syrian Bashar Assad. And it says here that the talks focus on whether Israel might move to destroy Syrian weapon facilities, two U.S. administration officials said. Chemical weapons that Syria is thought to possess doesn't mean that they necessarily have them. We're just, they're just thought to have them. So it's kind of like the whole Condi Rice, um, uh, Dick Cheney, and the whole, the whole tribe, the whole clan, right? So I even heard about Condi Rice actually possibly running for vice president, so who knows. But it's the same rhetoric and lies. And speaking of lies and false flag attacks and disinformation, what do we have as well while I was gone? Um, so it's here, this Bulgarian uh, terrorist attack. Report Burgess bomber in Algerian Swedish Islamist. He uh, says here that a suspected terrorist who blew up Israeli tour bus says he spent two years in Guantanamo Bay. Stockholm denies he was a Swedish national. For some reason, they keep doing that. Uh, Sweden. And just like Norway and other Scandinavian countries around that area, uh, there's a big crackdown on a uh, growing consensus, which is people want their country and their culture back. And so they call them terrorists and right-wing extremists, so they have to do things like that and link these Muslims that they let in and flood in uh, into their country. Uh, did, like clashing cultures, like I said. I mean, they could mix, but they're just not mixing. So it's causing tension. 
and um, they take something that's real and not really a threat and then they, they co-opt it and they turn it into something violent and they attach it to terrorists like that, which are usually from what? Guantan Guantanamo Bay. So Burgess suicide bomber was a Guantanamo Bay jihadist. And uh, it says here, DOD report reveals some detainees interrogated while drugged, others chemically restrained. So, yeah, they're all drugged up when they go there. Um, and it says here, they may not even be, have been terrorists to begin with, but they drug them, they brainwash them. God knows what the kind of programs they put them through. It's probably the same thing they're going to be using for us when they send us off to the camps or the roundups or whatever, right? Behavior modification. It says here, uh, U.S. Uh, spies got so obsessed with right answer, they resorted to torture to get the right answer. So, sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Similar story. Like in France, there's the same consensus in France about what I was talking about. And, uh, you know, oh, this guy was from Algeria, too. Many people refer to him as, what, pro-Israel. So, then we have Bulgaria bombing allows him to flay Hezbollah, Iran, and possibly go to war. Israel's history using terrorism as fake pretext for war. They're wondering if this uh, strike, that uh, terrorist attack that killed uh, innocent Israelis as a pre pretext for a war with Iran. Israel's former ambassador to Britain has uh, died from wounds received nearly 21 years ago in the London terrorist attack that triggered Israel's invasion of Lebanon. Remember that. Iran says Zionist enemy hit hard. Tehran continues to deny any links to terror attacks against Israeli tourists in Bulgaria. Says Islamic regime continues to stand strong. The enemies of Iran have initiated confrontation and are attempting to use all of their powers against Iran, but the Islamic regime continues to stand strong, says Ahmadinejad. Then I found this little article, this little guy here. Iran drought part of soft war by the West, says Vice President. I'm suspic suspicious about the drought in the southern part of the country. Uh, who also has Iran's cultural heritage. Uh, he says here, the world arrogance and colonists are influencing Iran's climate conditions using technology. The drought is an acute issue and the soft war is completely evident. This level of drought is not normal. Sounds like the United States. And many of you already heard of this. Egyptians pelt Hillary Clinton motorcade with tomatoes. So uh, Israel deploys the Iron Dome missile system on Egypt's border. And uh, most of you already know as well that Clinton went to Israel, right? So, and it says here, Secretary Clinton assassination attempt in Israel. It goes on here, it says, shoes and tomatoes in Cairo and bullets in Israel. So, uh, it says here, Israeli radio and Reuters broke the story, then went mysteriously silent in assassination attempt inside Israel on Clinton. Soon afterward, Iran's network uh, went public with a translated version, which is being boycotted by news services. Israel's vice premier says... Uh, they want to see U.S. toughen stance on Iran. So what do they do? U.S. announces more sanctions, sparking warfares, uh, fears, sorry, and then oil prices spike. I think it's $106 a barrel now. But Israel demands even more hostile actions. They say Iran should be stopped by joint regional effort. So the U.S. sends a floating command post staging ship to the Persian Gulf in escalation against Iran. U.S. deploys sea drones to Persian Gulf to clear Iranian mines. And I saw this story while I was away, and I was like, oh, man, U.S. Navy opens fire in Gulf as boat near ship. And they said, oh, I thought it was Iran. And then they go in there, and they kept mentioning Iran. It's not Iran. It's not Iran. And the first thing I thought was, this is psychological article. This is to embed in the minds of what's coming. Iranians in Canada, they're actually permanent residents of Canada. But it wouldn't be the first time they rounded up their own citizens prior or during a war, such as the Japanese, the Germans, the Italians. Then uh, Israeli Defense Force intelligence units grow to cope with Midi's upheaval. And even the Army uh, mortuary unit deploys to Middle East. Maybe they expect the bodies to be uh, piled to the ceiling eventually here soon. It says here, Israel's race towards World War III. Talking about orchestrated false flag terror attacks, which Israeli influence in the media, vast influence, can use to create an atmosphere enabling an attack on Iran by the United States. Israeli study points to Yemen as a site of proxy confrontation between Iran, Gulf states, and the West. And then U.S. may send jets to Yemen, but some are worried about the backlash. Well, who's that? Well, the Yemenis are going to get bombed. Yemen says U.S. drones used upon Yemen's request. And where are they flying out of? Well, one of them, Ethiopia. CIA takes over Ethiopian regime as it crumbles. U.S. is building secret drone bases. Actually, they had plans for four years, but they stopped because the Ethiopians weren't all that jazzed. Israel's preparing for the next Lebanon war. That's right. They even say they will inflict enormous damage. Bodies to the ceiling. 
An Israeli protester dies a week after self-immolation, saying, Israel robbed me of everything and left me with nothing.